Hey, how's it going? It's your boy AfterVex here with a guide video for you. And in this guide, I'm gonna basically show you how to benchmark your settings to make sure they're running well. The first step is to enable the developer console from options advanced, also enable fast weapon switch so you can switch weapons instantly. Now if you press the tilde key at the top left of your keyboard, you can open the console. Now before we queue for casual, I recommend you go to Options Video Advanced and max out the field of view. This will basically allow you to see more of your surroundings. Also make sure you got multi-core rendering on and V-Sync off and disable motion blur for clarity. If you have a dedicated graphics card, set anti-aliasing to 8 times. Hit OK, Apply and then OK again. Now let's go to Options Mouse and enable raw input. This will basically bypass the windows filtering and acceleration and I usually like to use around sensitivity 2.1 but this is definitely personal preference and it depends on your mouse. Hit apply then go ok. Now let's search for a game of casual and hopefully we'll get a full server of 12 players versus 12 players. While I wait for it to queue let's go to advanced options and enable last hit sound when your attack kills an enemy and also hit sound every time you hit an enemy. It's very important. Make sure you got damage text enabled and on default the damage numbers are red which can be difficult to see so I recommend you turn the green up so that the damage numbers are yellow. Play a sound when the sniper rifle is fully charged is very useful so you don't have to look at your HUD as much. I recommend you turn off sniper resume after firing a zoom shot because if someone rushes you when you're scoped in it's going to be really hard to escape. Enable the continued healing as medic and I think you can turn this bar down and it will make you be able to see your teammates as medic. I like the minimal HUD but it can make the health and ammo a little bit harder to see. Colorblind mode is good because it will put icons above the enemy's head when they have status effects. I recommend turning off the player model and class HUD because it reduces the performance also max out the view model field of view and I've just found the game so I'm going to click OK to make sure my settings save. Scrolling back to where I was, mouse input on the scoreboard is a good one. It'll allow you to right click on people and mute them. Ping values is also useful. You'll be lucky if you ever play on a server that supports replays so we'll just scroll past that. If you disable weather you can get a bit more FPS on maps with rain or snow. I'm going to reduce the decal limit but we're going to change that in a config later. Don't die. And minimized view models are really good. I like to disable sprays just to save a few FPS and keep the game looking clean. Down here if you want to record demos you can set the min kill streak count to 20 and the time between kills to 60 seconds or more and you can save godlike gameplay recordings without using kill streak items. And auto delete recordings that have no kills in them. But for now we're just going to manually record a demo because we don't want to record the whole match. We just want to record a little benchmark. To do that press tilde to open console and type record space. Give it a name like benchmark and then it should say recording to whatever you called it dot dem. So now that's recording just play as you normally would but look around more. And if you die press mouse one and spectate to load different areas of the map. And render as many things as possible because this is going to be our benchmark. It's very important to record for two minutes or longer, otherwise the results will not be accurate. So when you're done, you want to type stop in console, and it should say complete a demo, game frames should be over 1700, the best result. And now we can leave. So now we're going to run our very first benchmark by typing time demo and then the name in console, and then hit enter. And now your computer's going to play it as fast as it possibly can. And after it's done in the console, we get an output of our average FPS. And now I'm going to run the demo again, just by typing the up arrow in console and hitting enter. Because the first time you play the demo, it has to load the map or something, and it runs about 5 FPS slower. Before we modify TF2, there's actually a lot of settings in Windows we can change that will improve our FPS such as making sure your power plan is set to high performance and not balanced or power saver. This will ensure that you get the best FPS your computer can deliver. You can also right click the desktop and go display properties and then advanced display properties and then display adapter properties and then monitor and you can make sure your monitor refresh rate is using the highest number so you just want to pick the bottom option on the drop down. Because I've heard of some people upgrading to high refresh rate monitors and then still having it set to only 60 hertz. 
your monitor will switch its signal so just wait about 20 seconds to see if it displays correctly and then go ok. Now another thing we can do is go to Windows settings and turn off all of the game bar options so that Windows isn't recording your game screen because that's going to lag the game quite a lot. If you want to do recordings though I recommend OBS. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card, you can go to the control panel, manage 3D settings and make sure the power management is set to high performance and the low latency mode is ultra. Let's make a shortcut to our TF folder by right clicking TF2 in your Steam library and then going to local files and then browse local files. Then right click the TF folder and go create shortcut and then just drag the shortcut onto your desktop and we'll be able to go straight to the TF folder by double clicking on that. While we're here right click HL2 and go to properties and then compatibility and make sure disable full screen optimizations is checked. This will basically reduce a bit of input delay caused by Windows 10. Make sure to hit apply and OK. Another thing we can do is press Control shift escape to open task manager and make sure we have no background tasks using more than 5% of our CPU. And if you can, close everything that you're not using on the left and the right icons of your task tray just by right clicking and go exit. So before we mod TF2 we're going to disable Steam Cloud and we're going to manually back up our config. So to do that you gotta right click TF2 and go to properties and then go to updates and make sure Steam Cloud is unchecked and then back in our TF folder make a copy of config and if you have a custom folder you can copy that too and paste it on your desktop and that way you've backed up your current config in case something goes wrong and you need to revert back to your old settings you can just drag those folders back into TF and hit replace There'll be a link to master config in the description. I'm going to get the high preset and for add-ons I'm going to get no tutorial, flat mouse and disable Pyroland. And then down the bottom click on download high preset and selected add-ons and it will download around four files. Once they've downloaded I'm just going to chuck them on my desktop. And to install them all you need to do is go to your TF custom. Usually there won't be a custom folder so if you need to just create one. It's got to be called custom and then you put the VPK files in there and then you restart your game. And after I restart the game I'm going to run a benchmark to see if it runs better. And after the benchmark is run twice I got 157 FPS which is only about 7 FPS better than default. But we've still got a lot to do and also it's not just FPS that Master Config does. Master Config also reduces your ping by reducing the interp. In the description there will be a link to download my modules config which downloads as a zip so you can extract it. And then the folder you get will be the folder that goes into custom. So when it's in custom it should look like this and then it has a folder in it called CFG. Then once that's in restart your game. And in console it should say Optive Modules Installed and it should say Modules Added. And now we're going to run a time demo benchmark to see how much better it runs with this mod. And it runs about 223 FPS. Let's get a custom HUD. To do that you got to go to HUDs.tf and then click HUDs and oh BX HUD looks nice. I'm going to download it. You can also check if it works on Mac or Linux. I'm going to drag it onto desktop and extract. And you want to copy the folder that contains resource and scripts. Then copy that to your custom folder and restart the game. When you launch the game a lot of the UI will be changed and surprisingly after a benchmark the game actually runs 7 FPS better on average with this HUD compared to the default HUD which is quite cluttered. If you want to test your HUD in the settings you can download this map called TR Walkway. There will be a link in the description. You just got to extract the zip and go into the folder and copy TR Walkway RC2 and go to your TF folder and then put it in the maps folder. Before you load the map you need to make sure SVLR point server command is set to always and you can also use fake lag which I think is quite important for practicing otherwise you'll be practicing with 5 ping instead of the same ping as you get on regular servers. So to enable that you can do SV cheats one and then net underscore fake lag 21 and then you can load the map with the map command in its tr walkway rc2 
Once the map's loaded, you have to join the red team just a heads up. And when I'm in, I'm going to type netgraph1 in console to open up the graph. You can see I've got 50 ping, and that's usually what I get in casual. I recommend you use crosshair7 and make it a very bright color like yellow or lime. You can make it yellow by turning the red and green to max with no blue, and you can turn down the red so it's all lime. There'll be a link to this launch options page where you can just copy them and then go to your Steam library and right click TF2 and go properties, set launch options and then you just paste it in there and go OK. In the description there'll be a download link for my custom folder that I use which has stuff like my hit sound, my edited default HUD that makes the health and ammo easier to see with min mode HUD, you need to enable min mode HUD if you got my edited default HUD and PREC, which is a really good mod for recording demos for all your matches automatically. And it's also better than the in-game demo recorder because it will start recording when both teams have readied up, but also you can't use PREC with the in-game competitive. There's a few no Christmas lights and no hats mod, which basically removes the Christmas lights from the skins, not the default festive items. And the no hats mod actually replaces most hats with default hats and actually improves the FPS by a bit. There's my directs only no smoke mod and a few sound removal mods like the freeze cam, the kill streak sound, the domination and revenge sounds get removed and there's my hit sound and kill sound which you might notice in my videos. So by now you should be able to optimize your TF2 and just have a great time hitting all your shots in all your games. Perhaps share this video with a friend or check out my other videos. I hope this video helped you. If you have any questions, you can contact me on Discord. I'll see you later.